This video is going to cover flare cut. Um, another term that's be being used is transitional cut. I generally like to stay with flare cut because um, Roger Bliley, who uh, started doing this many years ago, um, coined that that term for the style of engraving, and so uh, rightfully so, it it in my opinion it should be called the flare cut. But uh, no matter what you call it, um, everybody um, has a little bit different take on it. Um, and what this video is about really is to show you what um, I've been doing. Um, what I've done is I've come up with a, a geometry that works well for me, uh, and people can try it. It's basically a flat graver, and it has a radius teal. It has a um, an angle in the front. Uh, I don't know how many degrees it is um, because I, I really don't measure it. I just, this kind of sharpening I usually do under the scope. Um, but you can see the leading edge, which is what I cut with, uh, is further out than the rest of it. And then I also have the side, okay, has a slight radius heel because I'm using kind of the corner of this graver. <clears throat> and in talking to Roger, um, his technique is that he will start with the wide part of a leaf structure and then cut inward narrow. Um, and, and part of that is because we're using power assist. Had we been pushing by hand or something, of course, that would be very difficult to do. So um, I gave it a try and it works really well. And I started thinking that as I was doing the cuts, uh, I can actually go both directions. So that's kind of what this tool is all about. Um, let me just go ahead and start cutting and, and I can explain as I go as well. Now, it doesn't matter where I start, but if I cut in this direction, then the second cut has to go back the other way. That's basically um, really all that's happening. And again, we're, we're, we're cutting the flare uh, so that it, it has kind of a peak, uh, not necessarily in the center, but, you know, it, it slopes down um, from the center of the leaf structure down to the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start here and kind of work inward right now. So that means that the cut now has to go back the other way. And I will start here. And I'm going to make this cut wider. So. Now if you miss it in the middle a little bit, which you can see what's happening there, don't worry about that because you can come back in and make a second cut. All right, so on this leaf structure, and I don't have it drawn out, uh, you know, perfectly. I just kind of uh, put flow lines in, basically, and then cut accordingly. And then what I like to do is make sure I follow through, kind of like shading, you know, all the way back in to um, the, the very beginning of, you know, where the line is. Um, okay, so this, this leaf structure has got three levels to it, so the next one I'm going to go cut back out in this direction. And if I do something like this, no problem. Now I have to cut back this way. And I'm going to lay the tool down a little bit flatter so I can get it wider there.
and then the third lobe as I call them You see it appears pretty black. Um, try to put some side light in here so you can see. There you go. Very bright. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to continue on cutting. And um, through that, you'll be able to see uh, basically my approach. And the um, again, you can see nothing is drawn in perfectly. I just kind of... And that's, that's one of the fun parts of this type of scroll is that uh, you don't have to draw everything in perfect. Uh, you can kind of, it's not that you make it up as you go, but you have the basic form and then you can try some different things. And it, it's a lot of fun, really. Okay, so I leaned it that way so now going back in this cut I start here and cut back in and again this is kind of contrary to what um, you know the, the the direction that we normally would cut and stuff but it made a lot of sense when uh, I spoke to Roger about it and again you know we're using pneumatic assist it's it's not hand pushing so it's not necessary to do things exactly how they were done, you know, traditionally. The center part of this leaf structure, I'm going to start back in. So I always like to start back and, and let all my lines and stuff flow from, you know, somewhere rather than just starting at, in a, at an abrupt point. Now I want this to be wider through here, so I'll slow down and watch it and try to make it nice and wide. If you can um, get the mark the first time, in other words, here without leaving any kind of uh, uh, space or not quite making it, it it's always better um, you know because it keeps everything clean although you can come back in and and um, pick up your angle again and and you know cut make another cut like I will back here in the in the beginning of the scroll and a third lobe here again The other nice thing is that point comes in and I can start at a nice abrupt point as well. So you can see that um, this, this goes very fast. You know, looks nice. Um, you can do kind of traditional leaf structures. That's not a problem. Uh, I'm going to make uh, a flower here in the center. So, but I got to get to that point. So I'm going to go back in here.
I think this would be a good time to continue and, and uh, fix that uh, center part there. Of course, I'm using the uh, end set. And you can see, you know, you, you can cut very nice and smooth, bright, uh, not leaving the, uh, the um, progress marks if that's not what you want. You know, it, it all depends on how you adjust the tool on what you're doing. You see, it doesn't matter if I start out here or had I could have started here and gone the other way, uh, but now I have to go to the opposite point and come back. 